Oops, I'm late again. I'm late again. Wait a few moments. Not too long. I hope. See, when I look at that picture, I'm going to go over to the comment section right away today, but when I look at that picture, it's pretty easy for me to say Molly Maid went in there and got it to look all spick and span. Right? Makes sense, don't it? If you look at that, and there's only 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures in there, it's no big deal. I can imagine going in next door and doing that. Cleaning it all up. A little shine. Right. Take a little snooze in the corner when the boss is not hanging around because he doesn't want to get his rads too quick. He wants to get his pension. Now, I'm not sure how he went from deer to deer without any cutting tools or construction or scaffolding. I don't see steeplejack or scaffold connection setting up shop in there. And that pool, I must admit, it looks remarkably a lot like that pool there. So maybe they got something going on there that we just don't understand. See that reactor, that big yellow thing in the corner? That's pretty, that's what that is. That's pretty scary, I mean. And today, uh, not that we need any proof anyway, but just to be a dick. I'm going to give you some proof that the world is insane uh, with good reason. Hang on. Chunk, chunk. Come the data. Here we go. Whoa. Unplug my computer. It got brighter. Well, what does that mean? That means I must have screwed up somewhere. So I got a link under the video. I just want to show you a couple of things about that. And I got the screen captures to make it just a little easier because I know how lazy we get uh, at this time of the day. And it's evidence of sharp features in the Fukushima plume. In the Fukushima plume. In the plume. Over... That's O V N E R. You can go check that word out on Wikipedia after. Southwestern British Columbia. Ah. Oh, this was March the twentieth, two thousand eleven. The fun doesn't stop there. Whoa, what would be the sense in that? This gem is. <laughs> I think they were drunk when they wrote this one. The Fukushima plume. That's the middle one, right? That middle sentence. The Fukushima plume. The plume. The Fukushima plume. The plume. The, not past tense. <laughs> or past tense, right? Not future tense or possibility tense. Blah, blah, blah. The Fukushima plume provided a nice opportunity to test the radioactivity detection capabilities. <laughs> I'll let you ponder that sentence for a minute. Because the plume was here, right? Where's here? Well, we got a picture of that one for us. They were really good. They even gave us a picture. With pretty colors in it, though. So the pretty colors means it's good, right? And you can see in the lower part of the video, you know, I'll get it. Get that hand out of the way. Oh, get that hand out of the way. That's pretty stupid. i got to fix that. I'm going to point the opposite of everything. So, you know, down in the corner, that's Vancouver Island you're looking at. And every one of those colors are just outright nasty. And they line the entire coastline. And that's the, the third page in the link below. It's a PDF file, by the way, folks. So if you got an older computer, it might slow you down. Hang on. What's going on here? I didn't clip it on. Uh, I do that sometimes. Can't all be perfect. I know it's hard sometimes, but there you go. Um, and so what that's showing, the purple color at the top, the light purple at the top, that hammered the lower end of Vancouver Island, like Victoria and Nanaimo and 
it's just un inconceivable amount of radiation folks and this was at 750 feet up by plane and they're flying tracking along the coastline they're taking samples every 15 minutes and so that's the color coding you're seeing um, the entire coastline was full of radiation uh, nine days after this is a Canadian government study that um, I guess there's like you know Dana's out there all the time let's show him that we were on this a long time ago so they finally released it right and so they're like backing me up what I've been saying for you folks that's what's going on there not that we need that I mean Patrick Penny's got the entire email collection the, the plume gate so if you want to go hanging people in the streets, it's probably a good spot to hang out in those, even though he doesn't call for it, but the Constitution says you're allowed to. We'll cover that some other time. Now, uh, I got two more pictures I want to show you, and I'm going to come over to the comment section, make sure I say hi to everybody that I can. Uh, this beauty, let me get that other finger up. I can do this. Uh, <laughs> uh. Oh, my finger disappears. That's not too good. I want my finger back. There you go. Don't like it. it makes me uncomfortable when my finger slips away. People are saying I'm photoshopping shit. My finger is not there. Look up to the top of the island. And so they're taking readings at 750. Now there's one more picture I want to show you. They didn't superimpose the stuff over that. All the way down. And... Right? And Vancouver is... Right in that top corner right here, that's Vancouver Island. And it was eleven, nine days after Fukushima puked up a couple of hundred tons of plutonium and strontium and cesium, uranium that they never checked for. Uh, all of these isotopes, they can't. They need 1,300 Geiger counters calibrated to each individual isotope, and they have to find out what that isotope is. And this is a weaponized facility. And Unit 4, or 3, is MOX fuel. Now, MOX fuel, look up. Uh, mainstream media talking about two million times more deadly than any other reactor on the planet and think about how Chernobyl was one-third the size of the smallest reactor at Fukushima and that the MOX fuel in number three was huge that's not a power plant that's a military industrial processing enrichment facility and um, that, that those plumes have never stopped for over 900 and uh, almost a thousand days now. On December the 5th, it'll be a thousand days of death plumes hemorrhaging out of that place. And what we just looked at that time is coming at us every single day. So they could have went up there every day and would have got these uh, same types of incredible high readings. These are all incredible high readings. So Vancouver Island, uh, Vancouver, Nanaimo, British Columbia is contaminated. And... Apparently they didn't want to tell us that these plumes were coming because they were afraid if we all ran out the door, then wherever we ended up to, that's the plume would catch us there. And that's right. And what they should have done was told us to stay in our houses till the rain knocked it out of the sky or something, or till it passed. And then they should have said, okay, now we're going to move you to another part of Canada. And so they didn't want to do that one for some reason. I don't know why, but... There's, there's obviously, a, they got some kind of reason, and then they decided that, ah, we just won't say nothing. Well, phone, hey, you know, I can see the guy in the back of the plane now. Mom, mom, close the windows. <laughs> They're not going to tell the rest of Canada to close their windows. They're not even going to tell them to get off the street. Look at Jericho, uh, Fallout, number two episode. And they lock everybody in the mine and blow the gate of the mine because the radioactive rain is going to rain down. And then look at the victims in the next couple of episodes where they're full of, uh, immediately, within a couple of days. And they're just portraying what they used to teach the kids in uh, the 50s and 60s about nuclear fallout. Nuclear fallout. Let me say that again. See how that rolls off my tongue? Maybe the media can say that some of these days instead of saying, <laughs> Oh, I went up near. <laughs> What about the part where it falls out? <laughs> right? It's not funny, I know. It's the gallows humor. But, you, I mean, they're not looking for uranium, the 235 and the 234, which is the weaponized uranium. And once again, d these particulates we're talking about, folks, if you're not familiar, a Dixie cup will kill everybody in, in a restaurant in an hour, every hour, till the end of time. We're at war with this planet until the very end of time because of uranium 
And there's so many different family trees of uranium, so many different concoctions of uranium. And when you separate that, the betas, the gammas, the alphas, the neutrons, the x-rays all become extraordinarily more powerful, more toxic, more uh, lifetime, more huberants. And it's the same for the plutonium. We don't even check for plutonium. Like if you ingest it, you can't check for that. It sequesters into your organs. And it also, it's very solutable, the strontium and the cesiums and their, their hideously named family tree are extraordinary in the sense that they get absorbed into our water and into our ground. And so it's like uh, the article today that Tokyo is polluted, right? That's quite the admission. And that 70% of Japan is radioactive. And so that whole country, including Vancouver Island and the Philippines, should all be dug up and put on a nuclear waste site. I mean, Japan. I mean, uh, Fukushima. I mean, Japan. See, the typhoons that come into Japan, they whip up all these isotopes. They're terrorized and terrified now of forest fires because it will liberate all these hideous, weaponized, industrial complex. Nothing to do with a power... Because they were making power 40, 50 years ago. They don't need the other 1,300 isotopes. Only the, the Fuku this entire planet up, right? Let me go over and say hi in the comment section. But that chart below is so important because that was nine days after by the Canadian government, right? It started on March 19 at 1,800 hours, 6 o'clock, the Pacific Standard Time. Yeah. And it ended at March the 20th, the very next day, at 12 o'clock. Noon, right? So it was less than 24 hours. And they're only looking for certain particulates. But if you look at that dispersal that you're looking at there, think about what we're talking about. Again, folks, is these rods were cannibalized in aerosol to the nano atomic scales. And they become their own little nuclear engines when you spray that salt water on because it's a sulfur, right? It's structurally, sulfurically allows uh, uranium to get inside of and become its own little tiny atomized nuclear engine. Once again, that's the gallows humor because it's so hideous. There, it, it can't be detected. And a lot of that you can only detect the gamma rays. You can't, right? Because that's what you're looking for, that the average person might be out there. Like, like these planes were, are very special, what they're doing. And they're contaminated when they flew through that. So they probably put that on a nuclear waste site when they finish with it, right? Because that would have been the ethical thing to do. That's what they do right after they told everybody to stay indoors, right? They put it on a nuclear waste site, I'm sure. Well, wait, that's right. They never told anybody to stay indoors. So they let everybody walk around, walk their pets, with their children walking to school. Because you got to realize they were doing tests 6 o'clock in the morning all the way up to 12 o'clock in the morning. And they were, right, so all the children were walking to school, in British Columbia an hour, an hour and a half later, all over British Columbia. So these children will get all kinds of leukemias and a lot of them will die young, never knowing any difference. They'll develop all kinds of immune deficiency. And there's another link on my video about the DCA, right? And this was an updated story about this and it shows how uh, that professor academically has been reviewed by other institutions in 2002, in 2004, in 2007, a couple of times in those periods too, about the same institutions and in, uh, the journals, the same peer-reviewed academic science journals. And then it was peer-reviewed again in 2010. And each time they found out that DCA kills cancer. Now, it does this unique thing where cancer stops you from absorbing nutrients. It, it binds up your receptors of the nutrients and messes with them, in other words, is what I'm trying to say to you. Well, GMO, right, uh, and I got the peer-reviewed academic studies that I've talked about many times, and you can go back to my videos so and find a two-hour where I try to fit 400 headlines about why GMO is so bad. Most of that was peer-reviewed. But anyway, GMO has all the nutrients engineered out and glyphosates and formaldehydes engineered in, right? And these are known carcinogens. But they also act to enhance cancers. And because you've got all this GMO, because everything in your corner shop and supermarkets, and you can't go to mom and pop shops because the corporations with human rights have displaced all those in your community. And because there's no one left now, only the corporations, and they don't pay taxes because they got human rights, and they put their money in offshore accounts for the lobbyists, and to buy up competition, tax-free, 
well, all the mom and pops don't pay taxes anymore, so that means they have to cannibalize you, your communities, right? And your local, state, and federal governments will cannibalize you and create all these new laws and regulations in order to um, to fleece you of every jingle you have in your pocket. And what the point I'm trying to draw in the parallel is we're, that we are drawing, of course, because none of this is conjectures. These are all vetted facts. Is that without the nutrients in your body, the cancer is much more faster acting, much more. And what the cancer does is it drags out all these white blood cells from all your joints and your spleen, and that displaces all the oxygen molecules in your blood. And so that makes you really weak, and that makes you um, not feel good, right? You might feel sick, nauseated, and all that other stuff as a byproduct of not even having just before the radiation gets to you. It got to you, I should say, because it's past tent and present tent and future tent, because the entire Pacific Ocean has this entire uh, history now of almost a thousand days of about 4.3 billion gallons a day running over the coriums, the hot cores, that were meant to go down through the topsoil. They brought in 100 foot of topsoil, and so these things sink down into the bedrock, which is part of their plan, their oh shit plan, and then the ocean comes in, or preferably a river comes, fills it up, and flushes it into the ocean. And because you're in Japan, the Pacific barn whisks it away from your coastline. And that's also the jet stream is right straight above that. So it's not only the Pacific barn that's whisking the ocean currents immediately away from Japan, that's why they only check a few miles offshore, right? Because there's that vacuum effect. Think about the water going into your bathtub. And think about how it drains your bathtub the way that works. Um, so I want to come up and show you what, what, why that's... Might get a bit of stuttering in the video. Hang on. My computer being a dick. That's appropriate because I'm one too sometimes. Uh, hang on. Where's that beautiful picture? Now this picture claims, this picture claims it takes three days for those plumes to get here. And uh, jet streams are at 100 miles an hour, 24 hours is 2,400 miles, miles we're talking about. So it's around 5,400 miles. So three days, and but the plumes never stop coming out of those bowels of hell, right? Yeah? Well, that one's a good one. That's building four you're looking at. But now it looks like now it looks like that. I'm not sure how they done that because that building got whacked by bundles of rods from the three detonations, the hydrogen detonations. Well, they're claiming that because they know about the isotopes that gets released, right? But they did find nuclear detonation was different from an explosion, but they found the nuclear, nuclear detonations in California. Seven days later, they identified the isotopes in the rain and that's how they know that one was a nuclear detonation, they believe. But can you actually believe anything that comes out of their mouths? Period. All they've done is lied for 100 days. They not only lost, <laughs> they lost fate, they lost the entire planet. And they killed the Pacific Ocean water at it. And so that the model, and let me keep going here on this one first. What you're looking at is a melted core. The core is missing. So just one of those is worse, nine times worse, than Chernobyl's 30% meltdown, because that's 100% meltdown, and it's three times the size. But UN4 was much bigger. And, but we're talking about power plants, we're not talking about MOX fuel, two million times worse than Chernobyl's, like two million Chernobyl's, where all the rivers running out over the, over the hot coriums and then into the ocean. And if the water stayed there, it would boil. Right? 9,000 degree temperatures Fahrenheit, so it would boil. And what that means, you wouldn't be able to get on that site. Not only would it be liquefaction, everything in there would be tipped over by now because it would be just one big steam. It would turn into a sinkhole because there's 9,000 degree Fahrenheit. So the, the ocean ha or the river that runs underneath it, right? The old rock, because like a river exists for thousands of years because it wore all the sediment away all the way down to the bedrock. And so it sat on that bedrock for millenniums. Right? And that's what we know we call rivers, old riverbeds. 
And so the theory works is that the Williams went down pitched on that, and then, right, so now they stopped off-gassing as much as they were doing before, which is still creating all this madness, this incredible, inconceivable, non-stop, non-stop hemorrhaging of massive amounts of isotopes to, you know, if you took out, there was one, bill, one million gallons per minute per core, just to keep it cool, below, you know, uh, 1,800 degrees, because it starts to melt through at that. Well, times 1,440 minutes in a day is 4.3 billion gallons for the three cores, right? A million gallons a minute for each of the cores. And so that is flushing out into the ocean full of isotopes, the 1,300 weaponized, destructive, nothing to do with power, isotopes, right? They shouldn't have been added, period. They should never have been added. Let me finish up that on this rant I got going here. And today, headline was an all-time radiation high level in a well at the Fukushima plant, 40 meters, 120 feet from the Pacific, is 1.1 billion Beckwolds disintegrations per second per cubic meter. <laughs> Cockroach will go. Um, in Sellafield, England, there's 8 million liters a day going into the ocean. You shoot the seagulls when they land. They don't get to fly away. But this is hideous stuff. Feared, highly contaminated. So they're breaking out now and they're starting to come out with some truth. And so here's another one. Today, they showed up. This is amazing, too. There was three, four today that I never dreamt I would ever see coming out of their mouths. But the fuel is damaged in two Fukushima pools. Gee, you don't say? Go away, boy. <laughs> like, I don't know what to say when people I read those headlines. 150 billion Beckwolds per cubic meter of cesium-137. What about the plutonium? What about the strontium? What about the uranium? What about the 234, the 235s? What about the 1300 military industrial weaponized isotopes they were using that created the max fuel to be 2 million times? Now they try to get you to, oh, you know, there's a combination of uranium and plutonium. Don't fall for that, okay? Don't fall for that. You can't get it 2 million times more dangerous doing that routine. There's something much different going on there with the lasers, had he enriched it. That's why a couple of those reactors are for, are for the lasers to enrich that MOX fuel and make it even richer again. But they come out and they horror it and sell it off as uh, making power. You can't use something two million times more deadly than any other radio uh, reactor on the planet and say it's for fuel, okay? The media might be gullible enough to repeat that. I'm not. And no, neither is no other scientist on this planet outside of uh, the lobbyists and your constitutions, your Bill of Rights, and your Magna Carta says it's okay to hang those fuckers. Oh, yeah. If it don't, I'll be writing it into the new one in the future. But no, it says that the lobbyists are not allowed to exist, and that's why they have an amendment to the slavery laws. The slavery laws was meant to protect black people from an oppressive government, from a tyrannical government. And instead, corporations have spawned a little uh, wart off that amendment for the slaves to give corporations certain human rights. And that's being used to bludgeon the, the, the sovereign people by a corporation. So uh, a, a amendment meant to give rights to black people is being used by corporations to take away the sovereign freedoms of everybody in every dem democratic democracy. Because that's what a democracy is, where it imports corporations with human rights they put all your moms and pops in the community because nothing can survive with a Walmart and the banks won't lend you no money, right? You go down to the bank, if you got a Walmart in your town, you say, I want to open up a little shop for bicycles and this or this or whatever Walmart got there. And they say, oh, no, Walmart got that covered. And if you want to open up a, a little a cafe or a sandwich and stuff like that, they say, well, you got a Starbucks and you got Tim Hortons. And you say, yeah, but we're only going to be half price. No, but people, people, people like that. They like paying more money for nothing, for, for chemicals and byproducts of uh, stuff that should never be in a food. But because of lobbyists, we can take 2,200 chemicals out of the 65,000 chemicals that they grandfathered in with no environmental and human impact studies. And you can take 2,200 of those chemicals in 1981 when the EPA opened its doors. So the EPA is a joke. 
It grandfathered in 65,000 chemicals, and most of those are carcinogens. Right? They never even tried to say, hey, you know, that's pretty bad. We better not have that one. Right? But no, they grandfathered in everything. And so that's why, and now we got the GMO, right? So you're not getting no nutrients in your body. If it's got a box on it or anything else, if it ever come from an organic farmer, you're poisoning yourself, literally. You can't escape it. And then now we got Fukushima. And Fukushima really messes you up because you don't have any nutrients in your body over the last 20, 30 years. Your body's, especially if you're like a third generation since the GMO showed up and your grandparents ate it and, and your parents ate it and you ate it growing up, you're already susceptible to all the hell that's coming at us. And I went all the way down that in order to make you understand that 150 billion becquels per cubic meter of cesium-137, the fact that they're emitting that, they got to admit that it's the exact same times whatever for plutonium. they got to admit the exact same, it's the same thing for the strontium, and they have to admit the same thing for cesiums and its family tree, its hideously named massive amounts of family tree. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad, Dana. Let's come over and say hi to people. Not that I ran out of steam, but I realize I've probably been talking for a long, long time. 26 minutes. Pfft, I could do that. I thought it was going like 27 minutes that time, for sure. No, nope, 26 minutes. Oh, oh, page going burp. Hi, Aaron. I'm going to come over to your comments. Hi, Miss Milky. Extra wave for Miss Milky. Why not? I'll do it with this hand to two extra hands. How's that? Pretty cool, eh? That's just a lifter, but I gave you a right hand, too. Um, yeah, they're calling the herd. They're, they're going to end up calling 95% of the species on the planet and an extinction-level event for the Pacific just to kick things off. If that's the opening act, I don't want to see the rest of the show. You can have my money as long as you go away. <laughs> Aaron Reeks says, as far as I could find, they're still governed by the Surrender Agreement of 1945. That's right. And so that's, a, that's something nobody can forget, is that uh, this is General Electric. This is the world government. This is the one world corporation. This is, the, this is the aristocrat of this planet, the blue bloods of this planet, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, Queen Elizabeth, Queen Beatrice, and a hideous creature known as Prince Philip. A vampire. He wrote in his uh, his book on the last page that it, Prince Philip, right, Queen Elizabeth's husband, that if he was, and he locked his father up, apparently, which is typical of these people in a, a asylum, but he had wrote in his uh, autobiography that if he died, he wanted, and there was such a thing as reincarnation, I know I said this last night, but I want to say it again, is that he wanted to come back as a virus and wipe out 95% of the humans on the planet. As he called them, was the useless feeders. And so there's creatures out there that are in power, can influence the way things are happening, or the fact that people were warned. Where was Prince Philip when these pl death plumes were coming through, you know? Why did he get out there like the proverbial Walt Disney movie and say, My fellow countrymen! <coughs> I got 150 servants! And and I decided I had to come out and warn you that there's death plumes coming through and you should lock yourself up and then we should abandon this land for 10,000 years. Yeah, no, I'm just rambling at this stage. Uh, let me go. Uh, Sergeant York. Zuki Gakka Makatoro Malara Shift. Warning, no one should eat seafood. Good call, man. Albert says, MSM, ooh. Carrie, Carrie Old B says, hi, Carrie Old B. Says, Miss Milky, where are you? Albert says, mine is toasty. I don't know anything so far. I'm, I'll get there. Hang on. There's a point to what I'm doing here. I'm just saying hi to everybody. Hi, Cucumber. U.S. government busy trying to print more money. Forget Hillary Clinton, Aaron. Uh, it's a friggin' wet dream for Hillary. How do we get in that conversation? 
Government is an illusion. Left, right, center, middle, far, extreme, nihilistic. Then you got all the other devoids. It's just one big devoid, see? There was never supposed to be that. Hi, Kerry, I'll be. I'm still trying to pronounce your name. Miss Milky says he. I've tried everything. Corazones, Neosporin, DRX, Loa, nothing helps. I'm in Michigan. Hi, AV6, Navigate 8. Thank you. Hi, Starlight. China will snort elephant tusks for immortality. I like it. It's kinky. Hi, Checks and Balance. Um, I'm probably missing out on the conversation with all the comments. I doubt if I can catch up to it, but uh, let me run down and see. Let me see if I can say hi to a couple of people. Bum, bum, bum. Just passing through. Hi, Mickey. Who started off? Whoever started off this Hillary Clinton talk, you're probably gone. Just kidding you. Hi, BC Liberals. I'm sorry to hear about your puppy. Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. I'm coming down. Hang on. Hi, Robert. Uh, Jerry. Dun, dun, dun. Brandon. Just a wee stiff in the Okanagan. Ah, oh, you poor thing. You should come try living along the Pacific Ocean and breathing in those non-oxygen molecules full of isotopes and radiation. You don't know what you're missing, I tell you what. Oh. You'll never, you'll never uh, complain about your neighbours burning their garbage again. Da bum bum oh, yeah. Hi loner. Yeah, did it reload five times? Wow. F five to reload. Oh I see you telling somebody here. Hi Nuber Magic. How's it going, bud? Still I can't get your tattoo shot to come out. Sensible. I guess I gotta use the other computer and just get because you got a high quality there. That's what I should be doing, because I'm using this other computer, it won't do the high quality stutters. Just drives me crazy. Uh, high info power. Camshaft. Third watch. No, no GMOs. And so I won't get all the comments here. Hi, Sergeant. I won't get all the comments. Looks like I got most people that time. I know I miss people. The uh, Rinderell. You know, she always puts up really good comments, and I always read them after, but they don't show up when I'm doing this for some reason. Hi, D. Canterbury. There you go. That was fun. The insanity continues. Well, the insanity... Yeah, I got no idea what to say about that. I don't know what we're all talking about either, so I'll just start jabbering on again while you guys chat away, I guess. Hi, Mickey. Hi, Mickey. Well, it's not just the west coast of British Columbia. Uh, no, it's the entire Pacific Rim. Those 7,000 islands in the Philippines archipelagos uh, snapped off every tree. It tore apart every house. Some left standing, but they were torn to pieces, shredded. The winds uh, at 195 miles an hour were a projectile. It wasn't wind no more. It was just full of projectiles. If you stuck your arm out a door frame, projectiles will stab it to pieces if it doesn't just tear it right off with a bigger projectile. And so that's not habitable no more. And these are produced by the radiation in the ocean itself, which is one of the things I've been focusing on a lot for people to really get them to understand this is not a game and this is a fight for survival of a few species on this planet. The way I, the world, the way the academic world sees it and the way it's told by many of the people who don't sugarcoat it. And uh, I'm not very good at sugarcoating things because I don't think it's necessary. I think what is necessary is that everybody understands the facts and are able to conceive how they work and how they can work and how they have worked and the examples in order to help articulate are well known so I always try to stick to the known knowns for people that way they can relate 
and it can resonate for them, right? And that the Philippines, of course, that hurricane or that typhoon was a, actually an F4 tornado. And an F4 tornado is usually about, it might travel six miles on the ground and it might get a quarter mile wide. That would be considered a really big, badass tornado. Well, this creature in the Philippines was a very high F4, borderline F5 tornado with a hundred mile wide eye and it traveled for hundreds of miles and it left nothing in its tracks. And the devastation is inconceivable. The victims are left to their own devices because to, what are you supposed to do? The entire country was flattened. The entire country was flattened. So the government literally just took care of themselves and their loved ones and used the rations for themselves. And nobody else got anything. And so by day four, it was pandemonium. By day five, uh, any helicopter that tried to land got mobbed and everything was on it was stolen jackets were torn off people's jackets and they tried to fly away um, but i remember the pictures of all the orphans screeching i'll never forget that i don't want to either because that's so real that and it's so important that we have to really think about how that will happen here and how that might happen in california or that might happen in vancouver and will at some point in the very near future, if it happened there, it's going to happen here. And these plumes, because there's so much every day hemorrhaging into the ocean, it just keeps moving the plume along. The plume never stops, see? It's not like a plume came out and then it's slowly drifting and spreading out a little bit, dispersing. It doesn't dilute. Radiation cannot be diluted. Um, and it, it radiates everything in its path and then it leaves nothing alive behind. It leaves no oxygen molecules. It doesn't leave the soup of life that is the ocean behind. It leaves um, a hotter uh, energy. It's like a battery. The ocean becomes like a battery. Because uh, isotopes don't stop beating. These types of isotopes, they want to talk about the 30-year half-life of the cesium-137s. But you have to take all the other isotopes, the uraniums, because there's so much more of that. And there's so much more plutonium. And there's so much more strontium. This is just a friendly number to use, a generic uh, name and number out of the 1300 weaponized isotopes that they decided to use con constantly in the media. And any other mentions are marginalized, minimalized, consistently and constantly, and disfigured by putting them in the same conversation as the background radiation from a plane, or the background radiation of a banana, or the background radiation of fucking water has nothing to do with uh, radiation that will kill you and your loved ones, okay? It has nothing to do. Would you rather know about the ones that will kill you and your loved ones and your children and your family and your friends and yourself? Or would you rather try to marginalize that by saying, oh, you know, it's because the numbers, you can play that game if you wanted to and compare it, but it, it's a total fabrication and it's a genocide against the population by misleading them and deceiving them and mauling them and manipulating them to can even to reject right the factual numbers and so you have to reject them because they've done it to you so much they were they try to equate you know bananas or potato background radiation or airplane background radiation or water background radiation or that their Geiger counters were even capable of picking up a high uh, rated a high beating particulate because they're not your Geiger counter is only meant for little tiny bananas and potatoes and junk right it's just throw it away throw it away as far as I'm concerned I don't see any use for it outside of just to frighten the shit out of yourself because you have to know how to use it you have to know how not to excite it you have to get a calibrator you have to know what you're looking for and is it worth going looking for that stuff because you could really hurt yourself by breathing that stuff in, if you're close enough to pick it up, you have to use your logic and say, look, it's it's not that I might find it, it's that it's everywhere, that I can't escape it, I can't move away from it, unless I go right across the country. And so you have to think about the jet streams, how they work and how the, the ocean currents, how they mix. And they mix in each ocean. Over time, it's going to spread, and not that much over time either, it's going to spread to all oceans. But in not such a heavy concentration as what we're seeing coming out of, uh, directly out of Fukushima, 
and that's going to do it to the, to the Pacific Ocean, but it's still going to be horrific. Because thousands of miles of clouds on the ocean is going to pick this up. Every day. And that's what it does for the last thousand days and whisk it into our continents and then crashing it into our coastlines and exchanging it into our tropospheres and our stratospheres. And how that translates, it gets into our water system and how, how that all translates into... The only solution is to get away from the Pacific, look at the jet streams and the ocean currents, and to make a determination that there's pockets where you can minimize it a, quite a bit. Certainly better than being close to this creature. You can't stay. It's going to be right in your face in another uh, 30 days on a scale, a whole new scale. And as that comes up the British Columbia coastline, it's also coming from the California coastline towards us. And so it's boxing whatever water is left there. And that's why we're seeing all of these die-offs and all of these uh, gatherings along the California coastline because the migratory animals, including the birds, don't have nothing to feed on and they're chasing them in this way. But also, uh, the plume is cutting them off. And you don't need a thick plume. See, the plume, even small plumes of radiation will kill all the oxygen because every beck wall is the equivalent of flipping a grain of sand. If you want to think about what, what is a beck wall. Well, it's enough energy to flip a grain of sand. So if you took one of those little isotopes and put it in a petri dish with a little drop out of the ocean, you know how the ocean's a super life. So you take any drop out and put it on a petri dish or a piece of glass, put it on a microscope, and there's millions of animals. Introduce an isotope to that, and you'll fry them like you can't even conceive. Because some of these isotopes that are out there are beaten off at a million beats a minute. And this is not funny. This is not a joke. This is real and real scary. And so you have to learn to eat healthy. You have to learn to make uh, commitments to your future that you're going to have to go somewhere else and get out of the path of the potential typhoons immediately that are coming our way. As this plume shows up, don't think of a 100 mile eye at a you know, 235 mile an hour gust or 195 mile an hour sustained. It should only be on Mars. It shouldn't be on this planet. Period. But it's because of a radiated ocean. And so you got to think about, you got to do the right thing. you got to start packing and, and organizing and saving so you can move on and start again. And it go, you know, the DCA I got below, you can buy it at health food shops if you look for it. You can order it in if you don't have it. Or if you're, not, if you're in a big town, go to the pharmacies and check them all. You'll find it. There's no patent on it. And there's a link below, and that'll take you over to the study. And that's been peer-reviewed many times in this last decade and has come up stellar every single time. It reduces all tumors by 30%. So you got dandelion. Uh, you can eat any part of the dandelion. It has all the minerals and all the nutrients. So even if you just take dandelion and you, say, boil it at a low heat for 30 minutes, you took that water and cooked up your vegetables or cooked up your noodles or cooked up your pet food, or your baby food, all you're introducing is every nutrition their body ever craved and every mineral their body, their body ever craved. Is that such a bad thing? Because the nutrition that you're going to get at the corner shops and supermarkets are missing. And that's the reason cancer will affect you so hard and so rapidly. And with such devastation, you'll have to liquidate your assets in the future in order to try to get some comfort and get rid of the agony. But you can't because that's the honey trap they got set for you. Right? All your pharmaceuticals are GMO, all your baby food is GMO, all your pet foods are GMO, all your supplements are GMO. Right? And you go back about 40 videos and I got a two hour stream where I try to cover 400 of these uh, studies and the major headlines about this stuff to warn people. But I decided, you know, I'll just put it all together in one pack each. They can't get very far in before, okay, well, you got me. <laughs> There's no more illusions, you know? So I'll come over and say hi. I come say hi because I can, sometimes I won't shut up or not. I just keep going and going, going, going. Bah. Right, Zoe? Zoe's like, yeah, that's okay, Dana. 44 minutes? That's pretty good, right? I come over and say hi. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. I can't say why I haven't moved. It's a personal reason. I am moving though. Um, add a little seasoning so it tastes better to them. I got no idea. 
Aaron, sorry. Uh, I'll probably catch it in a few moments here, though. Hi, camshaft. Hi, Sergeant. Yeah, I heard about the dead sea turtles off Costa Rica. There's like 150 of them. Two survived. And these were rare turtles. They've never seen them together in that kind of group before. And they washed up. And the dogs that were trying to eat them died immediately, right alongside the turtles, just dropped dead. Um, the bum, bum, bum. Albert, seven dogs, two goats, chickens, four cats. And... My dog will eat anything, not a problem. Hi, Carol B. Albert, just passing through. Wow, just passing through, rough one. That's rough. Yeah. Hi, camshaft. Kurtz or K, so I don't get it, but I'll probably find, figure it out in a minute here. Yeah, all ocean connects, but they don't connect, right? They don't connect um, native for president. Yeah, for world government. No government. I'm going to change that word, get rid of it. To world organizer, to free education. Because we can pay for free education by getting rid of the war machine. We can pay for free health care by getting rid of the war machine. We can pay for... We can bump the pensioners' checks up because we got rid of the war machine. We can stop the 22 veterans committing suicide on the streets every day. Not all of them, but we can change that by actually giving them their benefits. And the list is very long. Yeah, we got lost. That's good, though. That way I'll come down and say hi. Uh, ba -ba. Okay, you want to know, so I'll end it on that about knowing about more about the eating habits. Yeah? I got some fun ones for you. Hang on. Types in the big, types in the fancy. Chickity China. Come on, give it up. I'll get something for us here now. Let me. Yeah, because that's a great way to finish the video off. Thanks, uh, Ryan. Free. No, nope, that's the wrong one. No. Nope. Freelance Ryan. No, nope, you can't hide from Dana. Dun, dun, dun. Camel's milk. Camel. Yeah, you heard me. I think the ones with uh, one hump is better than a two hump camel. But uh, camel milk inhibits the growth of colon cancer and it has other health uh, potentials. Hot dogs causes butt cancer. Uh, aluminum, the aluminum in your deodorants, that's linked to breast cancers uh, heavily and Alzheimer's and a few other things. Uh, ba -ba, hang on. There's 20 studies that proves cannabis cures cancer, folks. 20 studies. Look that headline up. 20 studies that prove cannabis cure, can cure cancer. And I'm going to make a video of all this stuff. I just, wanted to, I just wanted to throw a few things out there. A major study proved turmeric. Turmeric. T-U-R-M-E-R-I-C. Kills cancer. Now, there's 700 peer-reviewed academic studies. <laughs> I love saying that on uh, turmeric. 700 independent university studies and then peer-reviewed because turmeric has so many benefits. It's one of those wonder spices. Remember, anything with a spice is good. Anything with salt is bad, right? You need some salt, but you get it from everything anyway. I don't add salt to nothing. Oh, uh, excuse me. Hang on. So glossophates, which is what's in GMO food, is found to fuel cancer cell growth. It fuels it, the glossophate itself, right? We were talking about that earlier. Ay, ay, ay. Hang on. So the DCA, that's so important. 
So cancers, Parkinson's, and infertility uh, is linked to Monsanto. Again, because I got so much here, I got to keep, there's just so much here, I can't. So the chemicals in women's hair dye causes cancer. Household chemicals cause cancers and birth defects. There's 60 lab studies now that link uh, vaccines to cancer. Harvard done a marijuana study cancer. The FDA admitted that they put uh, chicken, um, arsenic in chicken, and all kinds of weird stuff in the chicken's feed that causes people to get sick. Chlorinated drinking water is a big contributor to bladder cancers. And the DCA under the video and dandelion root tea will definitely give you your health back if it doesn't completely wipe out that cancer. The DCA should wipe it out apparently in three weeks, repeatedly in the academic studies, and that link is below, 70% of the tumor, right, even hard tumors, were, were reduced, 70% of it. That's survival. Even if you don't get rid of any more of that tumor, that's survival, see? Because you stopped it in its tracks, you denied it the ability to plate in your blood. You brought the blood back to its natural... <coughs> Hang on. I know I'm looking for better now. I got lots of stuff here. Just I got so much of it. I'm getting an alphabetical order. I'm just going to cruise down. Sour sop, S O U R S O P fruit, is a hundredfold stronger at killing cancer than chemo chemo chemotherapy. But chemotherapy in the healthcare system is fifty thousand dollars a pop. So the taxpayers are popping fifty thousand bucks a a crack, right? And you're never going to get cured. It inflames the cancer cells and make them uh, ten times more potent. See? But basically all food chemical ingredients are linked to cancer, all 2,200 of them. Yeah, yeah, it must have been something went off the road down there. I just heard them go down a little while ago there. Uh, hang on. So fluoride accumulates in your penile gland, right? And... It, don't wear sunglasses because uh, your eyes need the sunlight to activate the penile gland, see? And that acts the same way as your kidney for your body. You need that penile gland for your brain because anything that gets through the membrane, anything on the nanoparticles that are getting through your membrane are also getting into the, the penile gland will accumulate it. And it's such an important part of your body. It's kind of like your solar plexus. You all understand subconsciously that your solar plexus is something special. And then I want you to understand about your penile gland and how sunglasses are designed to deny you of that while at the same time they flush your system with chemicals all day, every day. And, you know, because of leaching just from every aspect in my home, right, is the nanoparticulants. And they're small enough to get through the liners of your lungs and also the liner of uh, the membrane of your brain. And what happens is your body has to come in and attack that and that's how you'll get growths and uh, cysts and tumors is from these uh, particulates so small that uh, and that's why you shouldn't if you smoke you should smoke cigarettes without the filter because the filter makes the particulates smaller and I know people can't quit smoking because there's uh, over 4,000 recognized chemicals added to your tobacco none of them makes the cigarette burn better all of them make you give you cancer they can do that because they grandfathered in the 65,000 chemicals in 1981 when the EPA hung their shingle outside the door, see, with no environmental or human impact studies. Blah, blah. Okay, let me keep going. Look up four things you need to know about cancer and uh, candida. C-A-N-D-I-D-A. -I, -D -I, I know I, I destroyed that, but whatever. Chemicals in your household items um, are causing huge increase in cancers. Like all your Javexes, all your harsh cleaners, all the stuff you spray on your counter to disinfect it, right? You 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 uh, contaminate everything with that stuff. Those chemicals that you think are just killing all the counters, well, if you don't scrub, you can probably never scrub that off your counter ever. And so you need like wax paper or something like that, you know what I'm saying? Or or glass that you put your stuff on, and you can't use harsh cleaners on anything that like your clothing and stuff like that. You have to look for natural soaps, natural suds, 
a natural uh, ways to do that yourself in the future because you might need to know that if there's a breakdown that could very well happen right away if we have another typhoon anywhere in the Pacific Basin that even close to 200 miles an hour it's game over like go over to journeyman pictures and you'll see a documentary yesterday where the victims in the Philippines are saying, well, we can't live here no more if, if global warming is going to create storms like that. They don't understand it's a radiated ocean, see? And that radiation is the purest form of energy, and it doesn't stop producing energy for about a billion years. Because you got to take into consideration, all they talk about is the cesium-137. They don't talk about the uranium-234, 235 weaponized concoctions. They don't talk about the plutonium, the strontiums, and all their family trees. And the cesiums, all the different cesiums has other, right? Family trees are much more deadlier, much more long term than the 137. Right? So they only want to talk about the low rankings or the low numbers of any of these uh, byproducts of hell on earth. I'm almost finished. I'm not going to come back over to comment section because I'd imagine we're up to an hour by now. And just even find another tidbit for you. Hi, Zoe. Yeah, hang on, honey. I'll get up. I'll let you go towards in a second. Then we're going to chase the squirrels. Drinking one soda a day increases your cancer risk by three. And that, all that aspartame in your body, that hijacks your your system, right? And so you can't even absorb the nutrition into your body if you're still eating the GMO because of the way it attacks your body. And I'll give it up. And I am going to finish that video at some point here, folks. It's madness, right? That I'm getting as far as I as I am right now. And wheat. That's the one I was looking for. Wheat. It's the worst thing on the planet, folks. It's got like 29,000 uh, genes inserted into it. That's created as a concoction. And all of this is just hell on earth for your body, from diabetes to Alzheimer's. The list is very long. And you have to go back to what you used to do, you know, just a few decades ago, where everything was organic and it was safe, right? Everything you're eating at the supermarkets got the growth hormones, vaccines, and it's lived a stress life, etc., etc. And that uh, your your the food in the supermarket, if it's pretty, it's GMO, right? Organic food doesn't look like something you should take a picture of. It looks like something you got to carve chunks out of because it looks really bad. That's that's your organic stuff, and that has more energy. Just a single organic corn on the cob has more energy than a, a half ton pickup truck load of GMO. It has more calcium, more potassium, more magnesium, more cobalt, more carbon, more calcium than an entire truckload, just a single organic. That's proven by peer review academic studies on top of that. I'll come up and say hi, goodbye to a bunch of people. That Once again tonight, we 59 minutes, that old internal clock is working real good. Hi, Albert. Waving a hand at Albert. I'll do that for AV8, NAV8. Hi, Kirby, Oregon. Night Nubaru, Magic 2012. Is, the link is below my video. 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 Rad Chick is down there. Miss Milky the Clown is down there. And her old site. We got Susan's down there. Thomas Ackerman. He puts out some really good stuff. These are artists, too, by the way. So <laughs> every video is a little different. Remember, he's entertaining you and educating you and scaring you a little bit, too, when it's all good, okay? That's why they're down below. Hattrick Penny is down there. He's a wild man, and he's got all the emails, and we need people to flush their way through that eventually and find the culprits and find information. But we already know, you know, who we're going to hang in the street. That'll help us, see? We got um, Kevin Blanche is down there. Kevin's very passionate, he's been at this for a long time. He's got leukemia, or he's got cancer. I, should, I, should, I, thought, I think it's leukemia, I can't remember. It's really bad, and he still marches on every day. He's still out there um, butting heads every day with that system. He's out after everybody. He visits sites. He's out talking to congresspeople. He, he doesn't hold nothing back. 
and we need more of that. Hi, Benny. Thank you. Yeah, Nsaka Skate Tomoto Shift. See, I messed that one up. Yeah, you too, man. Hi, Bose. It's Earl. Can't pronounce that. Anymore. Hi, AB8. Navigate 8. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Laurel. Hi, uh, Robin. Thank you. Miss Milky the Clown. Waving to everybody. Dana's got a wave from Miss Milky to everybody. And we thank all the people she has constantly sent my way and for everything she does for everybody else in this community. It's uh, the video she put out of Hattrick Penny last night. If you go look at that, what you're going to realize is she had the audio and then she created a video. And as you watch that, imagine how much work, time, energy, heart, soul must go into something like that. And that's Miss Milky. That's why we love her. You're welcome, Laurel, Robin, Aaron, Brandon, I can't pronounce you, Kim and Vanti, K, Kimmy, Vandy, K, yeah, John Coates, Brandon just passing through, Cucumber, Camshaft, Kirby, Checks and Balances, Woo, Jerry, Freelance, Ryan, Mickey, Robert, I'm just running names off the top of my head now. I hope it, you people are actually out there. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I got your names right here. Capital Patel, we add turmeric to lots of dishes. That's good to hear. I'll cannibalize lots of people's names, but hey. Yeah, cannabis is really good, folks. It's really good. It's the real deal. That's why they don't want you to have it. And uh, fuck them, okay? In the future, they don't matter. They fucked up. Excuse the language. I apologize. Not really. Nuber Magic, there's a bunch of links below to videos, uh, very important videos. Uh, that's why they're dear, okay? And Missing Sky, I'll get a couple more names in here. See what I can scramble think. Hey, bud, I didn't see there, sorry. Jerry, Info Power, Love Nuts, uh, Sergeant York, thank you. Yeah, there are a lot of good people underneath my video. That's why I got them there so people can find them. And once again, remember, that that's another narrative, right? And you should seek out all the narratives, even the ones you don't agree with, and listen to them so you can have them and use them. Um, like the government didn't want to tell people that the plumes were coming, right? Because they would move and then the plumes would show up wherever they were to. But that was the wrong thing to do. What they should have done was told everybody to stay inside. That was their obligation. That's what they were required to do. And then when it was safe to come outside to help facilitate the moving out of those communities and moving on and restarting, resettling and reorganizing and then fighting back. And we need 4,200 peer review academic studies that are published every day and locked away in the ivory towers, flipped to deal with the Fukushima and the radiation fallout that we would like to hear the media at one point in the very, 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 very near future, preferably tomorrow, I'll start mentioning the words fallout that have been going on for almost a thousand days. And it's not like people didn't mourn you. Everybody underneath me have put their backs to the wall and their souls at stake in order to try to get this message out there. And that's why I'm here is because they inspire me, right? And we and we should be able to inspire you if you give us all a chance. Because we're not going to lead you astray. We're not going to lie to you and we're not going to sugarcoat it. We're going to give it a straight up. And you get to make your own conscious decisions for the rest of your life instead of being led by the nose into an early grave. And you don't deserve it. And so we're not going to allow that to happen. And that's why we're here each day hammering back regardless Regardless, we got to just make sure I didn't miss anybody that time. Okay, well, there we go. Great stream, folks. Tomorrow is day 999. Thanks, Nuber Magic. Thanks, Miss Milky the Clown. Thanks, Freelance. And everybody else that participated. We are so pleased. And we hope that you learned something. And we know you learned many things. But we hope you learned the one thing is that you have to have your resolve. You have to get a little bit more informed. Go to E&E &E News. 
and start reading for a whole day, and at the end of that day, you'll be extremely well-educated. Take care, folks.